bring in uh, Ernie Johnson. Ernie, do you look at it that way when you're nominated for a sports Emmy? If you don't win, did you lose? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, I always, uh, you know what? It's uh, it's always a uh, an honor. Uh, of course, if you are nominated. Obviously. <laughs> um, it, it did get a little old for years and years to hear the name Bob Costas announced every time you were there uh, at the end of a three-hour extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but it's like playing basketball in the Jordan era. That's what I always likened it to when, you know, you're broadcasting in the Bob Costas era and, oh, yeah. and you're not going to win. Especially in an Olympic year. It was just oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. does the company, I mean, you don't have to fly me up there. You know, I can, I can take it from... <laughs> hundreds of miles away but i i became really good at applauding and making it seem like i was really happy for bob costas Mm -hmm. yeah it got to the point when he would go up and accept it was almost like he was embarrassed to do it (laughs) he would tell an anecdote and just sit down (laughs) you know when when they start to announce the candidates and bob starts walking to the stage that's when i (laughs) that's when i went wait a minute here Wait a minute here. Uh, oh, let me give the uh, the uh, full intro here. Ernie Johnson, TNT, inside the NBA, and uh, multiple uh, Sports Emmy Award winner for Outstanding por- uh, Sports Personality, studio host, coverage of the Western Conference Finals, continues tomorrow. What is the bit on Inside the NBA that almost went off the rails? Mm, last night or any night? <laughs> Well, when Charles came in on the horse. Yeah, I mean, that was that's his second time on horseback during a Western Conference final. He did it in Oklahoma City and then uh, did it last night. And I think it was almost uh, flawless aside from the dismount, which (laughs) so there's a horse wandering around Dallas today with Chuck's hamstring still (laughs) attached to it. Uh, But I think that. I mean, I, I think there have been a few things that have worked and a few things. Some things are perfect. You know, some some gags that we do. I mean, when 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 uh, Kenny tried to duplicate the Kobe Bryant uh, um, new shoe unveiling by jumping over an Aston Martin and then we kind of rigged it in the in the studio or actually in the parking lot that we ran over and that was perfect. But then there are others that just don't fly. I can't, there were, there have been so many that, Hey, let's take a shot. And then it turns out not to be very funny or just falls flat. So to, to isolate one of those, it would be very difficult then. It's hard to land the planes when you're a host and you have personalities, your job is just landing planes. And then you have the moment where it feels like Shaq and Charles are getting personal. And, and this happened the other night where it felt like it was a little more personal with each other out in San Francisco. What role do you play when you know that this might not be what we thought it was going to be? I mean, uh, uh, folks need to understand too, that that these guys are so tight. Um, Their families, their moms were extremely tight when, when Chuck's mom was still around and, and we talked to Miss Lucille from time to time. So they actually are good, are great friends. Guys love each other. Sure, it gets heated sometimes. And guys, you know, when you're trying to decide or trying to defend your point, yeah, it gets a little heated. But I've never thought, oh, oh, this is out of control. But I think the best way for me to do it, I was always, <laughs> okay, let's, <laughs> let's move on. That's good, you know. So kind of your your bogus anchor laugh, you know, it's just the. <laughs> Monica, you know, it's one of those, you know, it's like, so, um, so every now and then you just kind of diffuse it that way. And then, and you realize there was really nothing to diffuse. It's just TV, but then uh, obviously social media after that is, oh, they're ready to throw hands. Oh, this is, you know, this is fixing to get, you know, and it's, it really isn't. Well, that's, I always like when Shaq goes, that's why you never won a title, Chuck. Yeah. Like, look at these. Yeah, look at these. <laughs> yeah I, I know. It, that's exact, it's always the fallback. I, I, and I always know that the the uh, any disagreement is about to end when that's brought up. I mean, that's like Shaq's last line of defense. He's he's already talked about the fact. No, a team needs to do this. No, they need to defend it this way. No, they don't. They, and it's 
was like, Shaq's just done. Hey, I got four of these. That's it. End of <laughs> argument. Let's move on. I was at the Jimmy Valvano golf tournament many, many years ago, and I'm at a table with Digger Phelps, Quinn Buckner, Lou Holtz, Barkley, and Michael Jordan. And Chuck is going back at Michael a little bit, and then yeah. all of a sudden the competitor in Jordan kicked in, and then he started going for the knees. He was going to – he wanted to take out Chuck in front of us because Chuck was getting all these laughs. And then Michael said, you never won a championship, did you? And then all of a sudden <laughs> it stopped. And then it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun anymore after that. And you're like, okay, you know, that, yeah. that, that's, you can always win an argument. It feels that way when you go, yeah, you didn't win a championship. Well, you know, and, and to Chuck's credit too, he's look, he's lived with that forever. And, it, and it's brought up from time to time. And, and so, you know, he's, I don't know if he's okay with not having one, but he's okay with answering that question. Yeah. And, 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 and so, you know, and I try not to go there unless he's really made me mad. <laughs> we're, we're talking to Ernie Johnson, TNT inside the NBA. I mentioned with Luca, he can get 40, but you're not going to win championships when you have that, singular talent putting up these incredible numbers. And I always go back to LeBron with the Cavs. He wasn't going to win a title. You know, got to play for a title. He needed help. Michael Jordan, he was averaging 36 a game. Then he realized that he needed help. What would be the best running mate for Luka? If you were going to handicap this of what Dallas's next move is to maybe take them up to the next level because the West is going to stay really, really, really competitive for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, and to your point, I mean, last night scores 40, but they're 0-3 when he scores 40. And so, uh, I don't, I mean, you've already got on that team a bunch of shooters. I mean, guys who can hit three-pointers, but unless, I mean, maybe you need a an absolute knockdown, no question about it, guy who's going to hit threes there. I mean, this is a, it's a, I'm the worst guy to try to say, well, you need to pair this guy with him. I just think, you know, we've seen this Dallas team as it is. I mean, they beat the Phoenix Suns in seven games playing the style that they play. That's five out, you know, and you come down and space the floor. And uh, sometimes I think I just think it's more of a maybe make a more concerted effort to get those other guys involved rather than being just the guy who's got the ball in his hands 99% of the time. Um, so that would be, um, I think, just the distribution is more of an issue than it is the personnel. What do you make of this this year's version or this version of the Warriors? Uh, to me, is look, I've always liked watching them play. I mean, there are certain teams, Dan, where when I'm up late working on stuff at my home office, you know, and there's a game on. And for years, it was like, oh, Golden State's playing, I'm going to watch. It, or back early on, it was like, oh, the Suns are playing. I love watching Steve Nash and Amari. You know, I, I think those those are entertaining styles of basketball. For me, Golden State is is doing that again. I just love watching the ball movement. I love how crisp it is. I love how the, the, the sixth sense that they all seem to have of, like the other night when Steph kind of got wrapped up in a corner and just threw the ball back over his shoulder. And Draymond was there at the top of the key and then fed it right back to him and he knocked down a three. And it's like, you don't see that with everybody. So I, um, and I think, so I, I think what I like is the way Steve Kerr has always described that team. I like the joy that they show when they're playing who, you know, I, and I think that's, uh, I think that's kind of been the, the baseline common denominator of those championship teams. And this one, there's a joy when they play basketball. Celtics in the heat. Um, I thought it would go seven, but I didn't expect Miami to win the this past game. I thought, okay, Boston will get one in Miami. I didn't know if Miami could get one in Boston. The health issue here, I mean, trying to handicap that series. I, I, no, you know, I don't know where you start. No, it's it's the same. I feel this is the same way you did. Um, but I also, I knew going in, look, they both, they will both get up in you for 48 minutes. Okay. So that's, so they're both good defensive teams. The question was, okay, PJ Tucker, is he, I think PJ Tucker is so huge on the Miami side that if he ever, that if he sits, 
that really hurts. I mean, it's it's kind of a Marcus Smart kind of an edge that he gives them. Uh, but I'm watching that game the other night, and I'm seeing that it's uh, 46 to 20 as I'm watching it, and I'm like, well, this one's, you know, this game's over. And then I was convinced with two and a half minutes left that the Celtics were going to win. <laughs> I said, geez, they come all the way back. Now I know somebody's going to do something. So it's been crazy. It's it's like a last man standing uh, series. You know, who's going to ha- get the next injury? I was looking for the wheelchair to come out for Marcus Smart, the Paul Pierce chair. And <laughs> and it was like, oh, man, he because that was a bad role. So uh, let's see. I have no idea. I have no idea. All I know is Jimmy Butler is is really good this time of year, that, that P.J. Tucker is just like this all the time. And I love the edge he brings. And and there's no way Jason Tatum's going to shoot again like that in game four. So um, if you're asking for a prediction, I have no idea. But, uh, <laughs> that, but that's the way this one's been. Ernie's going to be hosting the match, the golf event. That's June 1st. You got Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, and Josh Allen. Yeah. What do you want to get out of these guys? Is it? Uh, some? You know, I just think. That's a good question, and and it's, and it's I I did the first you know I did the first match with Tiger and Phil, um, and I just think you you have so many things going on, Dan. You've got so many mics being worn by so many guys, and then you've got me and Chuck and whoever, and then Trevor Rimmelman and Amanda Balionis. I mean, you've got like forty people with mics on. Uh, and now play golf and, and you don't want to step on everything that, you know, if somebody's talking, you don't want to step on them. You just, I think I'm just going to kind of be there to make sure that Chuck gets some touches and that um, I, I think um, I, I just kind of want the feel of, Hey, what if, what if four athletes, what if four football players talk about when they're out there, you know, and, and what kind of, you, obviously you want the needle out. You want some trash talking a little bit. You hope you get some of that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, what do you want to get out of it? What, when you sit down to watch it, what do you, what, cause this will, this will be good for me. I'll think about this the whole time. So what would Dan <laughs> be, what is Dan thinking as he sits on, on the sofa? Would you get a wristband, you know, like just put the initials. What would Dan do? I mean, that would w- be kind of w- nice. WWDD. Yeah. Hold it up. Hold it up during our, our on camera. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Um, no, I, what, I mean, what do you want out of a, out of a situation like that? What do you want to hear? You just want to hear guys kind of trash talking. Well, when, when Brady had his pants ripped and then he holds out from the fairway yeah. and, and he's given Charles grief, like having real moments is, you mm-hmm. know, I don't want to be a nice, I, I want them to be needling each other and then al- yeah. almost encouraging them to, this is your guy's TV event. How do you guys want to be portrayed here? Because you can guide, but then I think it sounds like your guy. You don't want it. You just want it to be like where Brady says something to Mahomes right away or Aaron Rodgers says something to Josh Allen, and then you go, okay, this is on. And, and mm-hmm. you have sort of that feeling where they give you nuggets along the way. I mean, I'd love to know, has Brady ever played golf with Bill Belichick? Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, those are those are the kind of things I think, as they're as they're uh, in their carts going to the next shot. That's what you and, and I think we've seen that in the past too. It's like, uh, hey, you've been working on how many how many hours do you spend on the range? Right? Do you practice? I mean, Aaron Rodgers told us last night. No, I don't practice, man. I just play. You know, and so yeah, let's hear. I, I do want to hear some of that, and I think in the course of twelve holes, I believe is the, uh, the length of the event that we will that we will. Uh, get some of that but I'm, I'm with you you don't want to sound like you're forcing somebody to say something they don't want to say I think I think we're kind of in this privileged position where where look we got mics on this bunch it's like if you were at the golf course and you said look at that foursome over there playing on number seven that looks like Tom Brady and and Aaron Rodgers I'd love to know what they're saying and that's kind of why we're there and and and, and I think it's up to us to listen to it and then pick up on something and say, hey, that was interesting what he said. Go into that a little further. Explain that. And then at the same time, having fun. And and uh, so that's it. But again, 
and you know what this is like, you, you've got a million different voices and you just don't want anybody to feel left out or feel like, okay, you've got to talk now because you haven't said anything. I, th I think you'll be hearing me uh, a lot of times just saying, uh, you're watching the match and we'll be back with more from Las Vegas. In a moment. How come only 12 holes? I think that's just the format they're doing. That's one they did last time too. Um, and it's going to be a, what do you call it? A shamble where you, uh, everybody tees off, you know, my team, we pick which tee shot we're going to hit and then everybody plays the ball coming in from there. So, um, it, it's kind of like, like we played a scramble at the black masters the other day, me and, uh, uh, Sam Mitchell taking on Charles and my son, Eric, as Charles did win the uh, black, the coveted black jacket. Really? For the first time. Yeah. Chuck's playing, man. Well, you Chuck's know, swinging the golf club. Ernie, I played with Charles years ago. Has to be years ago. Yeah. Um, and he shot a 79. Sure. And and then all of a sudden, he was trying to get better. He changed his... Somebody said, pause at the top of your backswing. Pause yeah. for a second. And, and and that's what that's where it all went downhill. But I remember playing in an event, a sanctioned event, those celebrity golf tour events. He shot a seventy nine. Sure, I mean I heard those same kind of stories. And then uh, in the time that I've known him in the last, you know, or worked with him in the last twenty, you know, twenty one years or something, um, I, I do agree with you that I think he looked at one of these tapes that that breaks down the swing from here, 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 and and paused. You know, just. And he took that literally. Yeah. He said, well, it's going to be really hard to con complete my swing if I keep stopping like this. But he's got uh, Stan Utley is his is his guru now, and he has fixed the Chuckster. I, Dan, I'm telling you, you know, 300 plus drives right down the middle. Really? Are, are, oh, without question, without question, he is killing the ball, and Eddie's got some touch, and so um, look, he's. He has come back, and and then Sam and I uh, lost to him on the 18th the other day. In fact, he, he Chuckster, Chuckster needed to get up and down from a greenside bunker at the lovely Legends Course at Chateau Elan, and uh, and he stuck at about 18 inches. I'd it was still, unbelievable. I'd love to see Shaq out there wearing no, wearing a golf outfit where he'd have the you know the the like Payne Stewart hat, right. and he'd have the some, plus, some plus four. fours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Color coordinated and, and just finding clubs that Shaq could play. No, I, well, no, I think even the key to that would be, no, you can't play uh, clubs that you can play. Here's a junior set. <laughs> I, think that would, I think that would be even better. And, and you know what? He would do it because he's the world's largest kid. And if he thinks, because you, know, you, know, you know what it would happen, he'd say, if I do that, it's going to get like 4 million YouTube kids. Oh, of I'll course. Do it. He, and that's, that's what it's all about. Content king. Um, good luck with the sports Emmys tomorrow night. And uh... I, will, I will not be there. I will be here in Dallas. I would except on your behalf if you needed me to uh you know our good our longtime good buddy who do you, who, who do you think if you and i both know him who do you think would be if if in just in case i am fortunate enough to win tomorrow night yeah you and i both know him you've worked with him before tim, this would be the guy who would yes tim kiley T, tk yeah oh the longtime legendary producer of Inside the NBA. I can get up there quicker than he can. My seats will be better, Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Boy, you guys, whoever gets there first. Okay. Because I would <laughs> I would say, um, oh, Ernie gave me a speech. First of all, um, suck it, Bob Costas. Overrated. <laughs> I don't need Shaq. I don't need Charles. Uh you know, then, uh, then I'll see, that, that, that's exactly why TK is going <laughs> to yeah, do it instead of me. Uh, yeah, but you know what? But he, but I have uh, every reason to believe he'll he will remain seated during my category. Yeah. Uh, tell the boys I said hello and uh, thanks for joining us as always. Hey, it's always great talking to you, Dan. Thank you so much for having me on. See Matt, you guys, Ernie Johnson. Yeah.
Ernesto is uh, nominated for a sports Emmy, and uh, he'll be hosting the match. That'll be June 1st with Brady and Rodgers, Mahomes and Josh Allen. And, of course, the Western Conference Finals continues tomorrow night on TNT Game 4.